If you think that air to air missiles chase their target like a predator bird, well, think again. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. This is the first video of an entirely new series dedicated entirely to air-to-air -air missiles. And yes, this is a subject that is hardly covered in details on YouTube or on the internet. Or better, you have to do some serious research to understand the things that we are going to discuss in this series. After all, you see all those missiles hanging from the wings, lurking from the base, they really look cool and you don't really stop thinking about how do they really work, do you? They just look cool. Some use infrared, some use radar, they actually chase enemy planes and well, that's it, no? At least that's what Hollywood is saying, that's what you see in the movies. So it must be true, right? Well, not really. So, the most important feature of an air-to-air -air missile is not the guidance system, is not the seeker, is not the autopilot, is not the warhead. The most important feature is the energy it can get and how it can use it. The energy depends from the speed and the height of the missile and it is basically a measure of where the missile can get and what the missile can do when it gets there. Often when we speak about air-to-air -air missiles, the hype is about the technology but the most sophisticated technology in the world can do nothing if the missile can't get where the target is. On the flip side, the best way to defend against air-to-air -air missiles is just staying in a position relative to the launcher where the missile can't reach you. Isn't it? Energy availability is the first consideration during missile design and energy is the first element that pilots consider when they are preparing to use an air-to-air -air missile. The missile gets its energy from the engine burn and from the speed of the launching platform. The engine burns for a while, accelerating the missile to a high supersonic speed. The speed obviously depends on the model and the launching speed, but you can say that it's going to be between 2.5 and 5. Mach numbers. So air-to-air -air missiles are much faster than planes. However, what most people ignore is that solid rocket motors used in the majority of air-to-air -air missiles just burn for a relatively short time. In some models they just burn for two or three seconds. This is the reason why that picture that some people have in mind of the missile that chases the target like a predator is false. When the engine is off, the missile just tries to reach the target, coasting along, bleeding speed, uh, bleeding height, and pretty much using the energy that it acquired at launch. Basically, if you force the missile to make a lot of turns, it will just bleed energy and it will fall off the sky. So by now it should be clear that if you want to maximize the possibilities to hit a target, well, energy is a good place to start. Launcher speed, height of release actually help, but there are also other considerations almost as important. Specific flight profiles can help minimizing the energy spent so the missile can get into the vicinity of the target with still a good reserve of energy and this is important because the target when it actually realizes that it is under threat it may try to evade uh, medium and long range air to air missiles may use a loft flight profile that is rather than flying straight toward the target they just climb in the first stage of their flight while the uh, engine is actually on and they use the energy and the heat they have acquired to attack 
target from above. The advantage is actually twofold. The first and most intuitive is the fact that the gravity may help the uh, a missile to retain some of its energy while diving onto the target. But most important is that the higher the altitude, the lower the air density, so the lower the drag and, low, and the lower the energy bleed of the missile. Another trick up the sleeve of air to air missiles is the impact point prediction. So the missile tries to predict the target movement rather than chasing the target directly and this improves the trajectory that is flown and reduces the energy that is required to fly the trajectory. However, if the target is really non-cooperative and tries to uh, evade the, um, the missile, well, it may become more difficult to actually hit the target. So, what about those long ranges uh, reported by missile vendors? Well, they are mostly meaningless, even when they're actually true, because most of the performances of air-to-air -air missiles are actually classified. What is often given is the maximum range in ideal conditions, that is the maximum range that the missile can actually fly in ideal condition, which has nothing to do with the distance at which it can be used in actual combat. Those ranges generally imply that the launcher flies at high altitude and the maximum speed available for the release imply that the target flies straight toward the launcher and implies that the target is not maneuvering. It's not difficult to understand that this is not going to happen very often in real combat conditions, at least against any competent opponent. So, it should be clear by now that those comparisons that you find on YouTube or on the forums, which are based on the declared data, while well, they're pretty much meaningless. I say that every weapon has its own use case and air to air missiles are no exceptions and different air forces, um, different users, may have different use cases. If you have followed along till now, well, thank you very much, but it should be clear that the first consideration about air to air missiles is always energy, because energy is what makes the missile go where it needs to be to do what it's supposed to do. So, if you are a pilot and you are in a situation in which the computers or you, or you yourself think that the missile has enough energy to do what you want to do, your second problem is how to guide the missile to the target. But this is the subject of the next video. We are done for today. The next video will be about active radar homing and I'm sure you will find it interesting. In the meanwhile, please subscribe, hit the bell to get the notifications. Please also take some time to watch the videos beside me if such is your desire. For now, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.